By the end of this video, when we open up our menu and go to our map, we'll be able to see a dynamically generated map view, where when we change to a new room, it'll update our current location by highlighting it and moving this player icon. These dynamic areas will be based on our predefined map bounds. We'll go into more detail on that, so let's get started. So in our previous video, we made this simple map. We can find it inside our UI, inside menu, and inside our map page. It's called map underscore manual. I'm going to leave this in this project, but so it doesn't appear and we can make our other option for a map. I'm going to untick in the inspector this map manual. I'll leave the player icon here so we can reuse this, which is basically just a white circle image and another image of our player's sprite. And inside our game controller, we've got our map controller underscore manual. I'll also untick this. Unticking these keeps them in the game, but they're deactivated so these scripts won't run. Now, as we've unticked this map manual, I'm going to click on our map page, right click and go create empty, and name this map underscore dynamic. We'll use this object as the parent for our dynamically made map objects. Next in our game controller, I'm going to right click and go create empty and make a map controller underscore dynamic. On our map controller, I'm going to click add component and scroll down to add a new script, which I'll name the same as map controller underscore dynamic. I'll double click on this to open it up. Now this is very code based as it's dynamically generated. So get ready to write some code. So we're not going to want start or update, but what we will want are some variables. I'm going to add some headers in to organize our variables out a bit better. So the first one is going to be our UI references, which will include a public rect transform for our map parent, which is what we just created under our map UI, a public game object, for our area prefab, which we're going to create after we've done the script, which will be reused as what displays on our map, and a public rect transform for our player icon, which we saw is the little sprite of our player, which will show on our map. Next, I'm going to add another header for our colors. So I'm going to add a public color, which is going to be our default color, and I'll set this to a default of gray. So this is going to be areas on our map that we're not currently in, and then we want a public color for our current area color. Which I'm going to set to a default of green, which you can guess is our active area color. Cool. Next, I'll write another header for our map settings. On here, we'll want a public game object for our map bounds, which will be the parent of our areas colliders. So if I go to Unity and show you, in our game, we have this map bounds game object, and you can see I have these polygon colliders on our individual areas, which map out the bounds of our rooms. So our player can't leave these bounds. We're reusing these polygon colliders to map out the shapes that will display in our map. So this map bounds is the parent we're going to be passing in. We want a public polygon collider 2D for our initial area. So if we've never played the game before, we'll want to pass in the initial starting area that our player starts in, as we won't have save data to load in. So we'll need something to point to. And then we we'll want a public float for map scale. And I'm going to set this to a default of 10f. We we'll use this to adjust the scale of our map size on our UI. Depending on how big your game ends up, you can change this by editing the scale. Next, I'm going to want some private variables. So I want a private polygon collider 2D and make this an array, which is going to hold our map areas. This is going to hold the children of the map bounds. Then we're going to want a private dictionary. Do triangle brackets to pass in string and rect transform, as this is going to hold our UI areas. And from the beginning, we'll set this to be a new dictionary, a string transform, brackets, semicolon. And we'll use this dictionary to map each polygon collider 2D to its corresponding rect transform in the UI. As we're going to be creating images from our polygon collider 2D, we need to know which polygon collider maps to which image. Cool. And lastly, we're going to add a public static map controller dynamic instance so that we can access this script with ease from other scripts. We'll go brackets get set. And now we can set up this instance inside an awake. So private void awake. We'll go if instance equals null, then this instance equals this. Else destroy this game object, making sure there's only one instance of the script in this scene. And inside this awake also, we're going to go map areas, which needs to hold the children of map bounds equals map bounds. Oh, I've done it with a capital M. Let's make it camel case and keep it consistent. Map bounds dot get components in children. 
and pass in Polygon Collider 2D. Also now I'm going to make a plan using comments of the methods we're going to need. So first of all, we're going to want a function that we can call from loading our game where we generate our map. In case you have a game that randomly generates new areas, instead of just generating the map, we're also going to want to be able to clear our map. When we move locations on a map, we're going to want to update our current area. And to move our player icon around, we'll just want a simple move player icon. So cool first, let's write a public void generate map. If we're loading this game and calling this function, we may have saved our game in an area that's different to our initial area. If this is the case, we're going to want to pass in Polygon Collider 2D of our new current area. As this may be a new game and we may have nothing to pass in, we can set this to a default within our parameters by typing equals null. So now we can say Polygon Collider 2D current area equals and here we're going to do a ternary check, which is basically saying we're going to do a short version of an if statement by saying if new current area does not equal null. And to make this an if, we go question mark. And so if this is true, it's not null, we're going to set current area to be new current area. And to say else, you do a colon. So else if it is null, we'll set it to the initial area passed in. So we didn't have a save file. So our current area is our initial area. Then to make sure our map is all clean, we'll clear the map. So let's write our clear map function by going private void clear map. We can go for each transform child in map parent. We'll destroy the child dot game object. So this will be any of the images we may have created from generating a map previously. Maybe your maps will change now and you've done some random generation for your areas. Who knows? And then we'll go UI areas dot clear as we need to clear out the dictionary that holds references to the UI elements of these areas. Cool. So I'll replace this comment here with our function by going clear map. Now, as we've got our map areas set up in our awake, we can loop through these by going for each polygon collider 2D area in map areas. We'll be able to create the areas UI. So let's keep this tidy and write a new function. I'll write this below our clear map and go private void create area UI. And we'll want to pass in our polygon collider 2D of our area. And we'll also want a Boolean to know is this the current area? So is current. So I'll again write out a plan in comments as this is the main bit of code. So first we'll instantiate our prefab for our image. Then we'll want to get the bounds of our area passed in. So we can then use those bounds to scale our UI image to fit the map scale and the bounds of our area. We'll then set the color based on if it's the current area or not. And then we'll add it to our dictionary. Cool. So let's go at the top game object area image equals instantiate area prefab. And the parent will be our map parent. We're also going to want a rect transform, which I'll just call rect transform of our area image dot get component rect transform as we're going to be accessing and using this quite a bit. So it's best to store this now. Next, we want to get the bounds, which I'll just call bounds of the area dot bounds. Very easy. Bounds is used in Unity, which you can see represents an axis aligned with the bounding box. So basically just the bounds of our polygon collider 2D. Now to scale this image we've made, we can go rect transform dot size delta equals new vector two bounds dot size dot x times map scale comma bounds dot size dot y times map scale. And then we'll want to set our rect transform dot anchored position to equal bounds dot center times map scale. So this positions it in the correct place on our map. Cool. Next, we'll set the color by going area image dot get component and pass in image. We'll have to fix the squiggles by hovering over and using unity engine dot UI. Then we'll go dot color equals. And here we we'll use that ternary again by going is current question mark. So if it is current, we'll use the current area color colon else we'll use the default color. Cool. And then all we have to do is add it to our dictionary. So we'll go UI areas square brackets area dot name. So that's going to be the key for our dictionary entry equals and we'll store the rect transform. So I've got the position of our image. Cool. Now we got this function all finished. We can go back up to our generate map and in our for each go create area UI pass in our area. And for is current, we're going to go area is equal to, so equals equals current area. So do these polygon collider 2Ds match? Once we've created all these areas, we can then move our player's icon. So let's go down to that function. We've got that at the bottom. Down here, I'll go private void move player icon. 
For this I'm actually going to use a string and we'll see why later for our new current area. So we're going to go if our UI areas, so our dictionary, dot try get value and we'll pass in our new current area. So we're looking for the key that matches this new current areas name and then we'll pass out our rect transform which should be our area UI. So if our area was found, we'll set our icons position to the center of this area by going player icon dot anchored position equals area UI dot anchored position. That's all we need to move our player's icon. So we can go back up now to our generate map and go move player icon and pass in current area dot name passing this in as a string as we save our locations as a string so when it comes to loading our game it's easier to update our current area speaking of updating our current area tada we are still missing one function so when we move from area to area we're going to update our current area so let's go public void update current area and in here we're just going to want to update the color and then move the player icon so for this we'll go for each key value pair the key being our string in our dictionary and the value being the rec transform now call this area in our ui areas we'll want the area dot value dot get component of the image dot color to equal now here i've actually missed out in our parameters we're going to want a string of our new current area know what we're passing in so we can now check this against our area dot key so if this area we're checking has the same key as our new current area then we'll set the color to be our current area color else it'll be our default color then we just need to go move player icon new current area cool now i've talked a lot about how this is all going to be used when we load our game so let's go back to unity and we'll go to our game controller and on my game controller i have my save controller this is where i handle saving and loading of our game if i double click on this we can scroll down to our load game function and in here you can already see we've got our map controller manual in the same place, we can also call our map controller dynamic, go dot instance, question mark to make sure it's not null, and go dot generate map. For our generate map, we're going to pass in our polygon collider 2D of our current new area. You can see above, we're grabbing the polygon collider 2D from our saved map boundary. And so we don't do this find twice. Let's create a new variable inside here by going polygon collider 2D. We'll call it our saved map boundary and we can set this to equal this find here so highlight this code where we do game object dot find save map boundary blah 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 cut that out and paste it into our saved map boundary now we can reuse this save map boundary both for our bounding shape 2d and also we can stick it down inside our generate map cool now this is only called if our save data exists so you can see we have an else here for save game if this doesn't exist. So inside here, we can copy this generate map line, paste it down in our else and just remove that save map boundary. As if it's null, we'll use that initial area that we pass in. Cool, next up back in Unity. Cool, so as we said, we have our map bounds, which holds these areas that we have planned out. Inside each of these areas, we also have waypoints. These waypoints move our player from one area to the other using this map transition script. So I'm going to double click on our map transition script and in here we can see as we're updating our player position when we move into this waypoint, you can see our old map controller manual. So we know exactly where to call our map controller dynamic dot instance question mark dot update current area. And in here we can go map boundary dot name. Cool. And that's all we need for scripts. So let's go back to Unity. Let's click on our map controller dynamic and let's set up our variables for our script. So for the map parent, we created this map underscore dynamic. I'm going to drag this into the map parent slot. I've also just noticed our map dynamic object needs to be on top of our player icon in this hierarchy to make sure the player icon appears on top of our map and isn't hidden behind the images. Back to our map controller dynamic object, we're going to need an area prefab for our script to use and initialize as an image. For this, it's very easy. I'm just going to right click on my map dynamic object, go UI image, and I'll call this map area image. And guess what? That's all you need. <laughs> so in my assets, I'm just going to drag this map area image into the assets folder, delete it, from our game view hierarchy, go to map controller dynamic and drag this map area image into our area prefab. Cool, next up we can see we've got our player icon needs its rect transform. So let's drag player icon 
into the Rec Transform. That's the player icon on our map UI. Next, you can see your colors. You can change these to be whatever you want them to be. I'll leave them as these default gray and green for now. Map bounds. We're going to want these T1, F1 map boundaries that contain the polygon collider 2Ds. So drag the parent map bounds into the map bound slot. Initial area, you're going to want to be wherever your player starts off. If I close down my menu, you can see our player is inside my T1 area as default. So he's in my town to start with. So on map controller, I'm going to drag T1 into initial area and I'm going to leave the map scale at 10. You can change this to be whatever you want. You can play around with the values, see how it appears. But for now, that should be all we need. I'm going to click play and pray. So cool. Here's our froggy. I'm going to open up our menu, go to our map and you can see we've got our two locations on the screen. If I close this down, walk into our top area, check the map, check it out. We've been moved. Hooray, isn't that fun? Just as an example, I'm going to create a couple more areas. So I'll click on F1 and duplicate it, drag it over to the right, and I'll rename this to F2. Maybe I'll do another for T1, duplicate it, rename it to T2, drag this down below. Now when I press play, if I open up our menu, you can see on a map these are being positioned out automatically. Now there's gaps between these ones as I didn't position them exactly to make sure the colliders were lined up. And I don't have waypoints to be able to move to these, so I can't show you those activating, but you get the idea. If you set up your waypoints correctly now to have some moving down here, I'd be able to go into this zone down here. But cool, very nice. We've got a dynamic map. Now if you're thinking, how do I now turn this into a randomly generating map? Well, when I move to a new location, it keeps growing the map out like a roguelike or a dungeon crawler. What I do is when I walk through one of these waypoints inside your map transition script, you should create a new function that generates a new area on your map and then moves you to it. So as you go inside this waypoint, it will grab some values between min and max to create a new polygon collider 2D. You could then recall that generate map function we wrote and your map will update with your new polygon collider areas. I'll make a video for this in the future, but for now I'll continue with this base template. But if you want to go off and do this yourself, by all means feel free. I just thought I'd mention it. So you get the kind of idea how this base template can be used to expand upon. If that script was a bit too long for you to write, you can check out all the scripts as well as all source code I've ever written on my Patreon for only $7 a month, which is £5 a month. Or if you want to grab this whole template, it's still half price, where you'll get all finished features and also any features that I'm going to implement in the future, you'll be able to grab the updates to that for free. So check it out. Otherwise, like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.